Hello, I'm Camilla and welcome or welcome back to my channel on which I talk about books. And if you don't know yet, if you're new, uh, I'm currently based in Scotland and I have been for almost 10 years. So today I thought I'd bring you recommendation of fiction and non-fiction books based in Scotland or by Scottish authors. I'm doing this today because, well it's not today, but on the day that this video is coming out, it is Burns Night, Burns Day, whichever you want to call it. Uh, which is a kind of celebration of the life and works of the national poet of Scotland, Robert Burns. He is known here as the Bard or Robbie Burns. He is a kind of classic, iconic poet and songwriter from, um, from Scotland. Every year on his birthday, which is the 25th of January, we celebrate his life and work, usually with a Burns supper. So my husband and I used to always go to one every year before the pandemic. And usually at those events, we have haggis, vegetarian haggis for me. Um, we have like, there are addresses and poem readings and Kaylee dancing, which is like traditional Scottish dancing. And it's just such a fun night of like Scottish celebration and of gathering. And it's just so, so fun. And we're going to be having one of those dinners just by ourselves obviously this year but it's just it's just a wonderful event uh he's most renowned for having written the i guess poems and songs including old lang syne which i think is regarded around the world as like this again iconic um song of goodbye and new year's eve uh he's written a fond kiss a red red rose uh, i think tam o shanter uh it's just so many, including a, the address to the haggis, which is read every year on Burns Night, obviously, before you eat haggis. So it's um, a fun tradition, and I thought that for that reason I would bring you some Scottish books. Without further ado, let's dive into the suggestions. So these are a mix of books that I've read and really enjoyed and I want to recommend, and also books that I want to read. So it's kind of like my TBR slash recommendations. There are about 30 recommendations. And I've separated into six categories by genre, so you'll be able to skip to the category or the genre that you like. So if you don't want to go through all 30 suggestions. But yes, let's dive right in and let's start with crime fiction, actually. Crime fiction is a huge, huge deal in Scotland. I think it's very similar to like a lot of Northern European countries, you know, like Scandinavian War and stuff like that. Scotland is very much has that vibe as well. Actually, Sterling is the host every year of Bloody Scotland, which is a crime fiction literature festival. So yeah, really into it. My first recommendation is the Shetland series by Anne Cleves. So this is obviously based in Shetland, which is islands at the very north of Scotland, kind of the northern edge of the country. Um, I think it's like from Aberdeen, it's like a whole night like across to get by boat up to Shetland. So it's a long way away. Um, it's very much like this kind of Viking heritage of Scotland up there. And this series follows DCI Perez from, from the TV show here. So Raven Black is the first in the series. And I read this last year and really, really enjoyed it. Actually, I really enjoyed the writing and a different perspective because it's told from multiple characters' points of views. And you get an idea of like the communities, local and the different dilemmas that they're kind of facing outside of the crime elements as well. So I think that that's what's so cool about this is that it's really mixing like the local life with the crime element. Um, if you've not seen it, I would also recommend the drama series, like the TV show as well. It's so, so good. Next, if you really enjoy crime fiction, I would recommend you check out Ian Rankin. You may have heard of him before anyway, but I thought I would mention him. He, um, I think most of his stories are based in Edinburgh and that's where the author is based as well. Uh, he's most famous for his detective inspector Rubis. Uh, I've never read any of them, but I know my parents absolutely adore, especially my dad, like his writing style. And he loves, like when they visited, like they were like, oh my God, that pub's in, <laughs> in the book. And it was just like very cool to show them that and they really enjoy it. And at some point, I definitely want to read one. Another author you may want to check out as well is Val McDermott and especially her Wire in the Blood series. Then let's get into the second category, which is mystery. I want to kind of have it a bit separate from crime because this one has a bit like of the mis mis mystery and myths and folklore um, element. So the first one I want to recommend is Pine by Francine Toon. I recommended that one a few times before. I read it, I want to say like in February last year and it was so, so good. Oh my goodness. It is kind of a mix of 
gothic atmosphere, ghost story, I guess coming of age a little bit, and crime. Uh, it has all of those elements and it's based in the highlands and you really get like the claustrophobia of being stuck there in winter and a small village and everyone knows everyone's business and people disappear and it's just so eerie and atmospheric and it's so good. Then another one I recommend a lot is The Library of the Dead by T.L. Huchu. I also read this earlier last year and it's this one's a bit more, it's a YA or middle grade. It mis mixes kind of mystery and fantasy because, and ghost stories, I guess, because the main character of this actually can talk to the dead. That's her job, like she gets paid for it. <laughs> and um, she gets kind of involved in these mysteries that are uh, happening in the Edinburgh of this universe. And it's really intriguing. And I can't wait for the second one because I want to know more about the Library of the Dead and where that kind of storyline gets us. Next is The Good Neighbors by Nina Allen. This is a, I guess, sort of mystery novel. Uh, it's a woman who's a photographer and she lives in Glasgow and she decides that her new project is to photograph murder houses. And for that, she moves back to the Isle of Butte where she's from, which is kind of just off the coast from Glasgow. And she, I, th I don't know, I feel like there's like the secrets and there's like myth, local myth and she kind of gets involved in that and it sounds so good it's on my tbr so i can't wait to read that staying in like the local myth and like folklore and stuff like that i also wanted to recommend kirstie logan um her writing is really really beautiful and it's really unlike anything i've read before so i read her first book i don't know if it was her first book but the first book that i read by her was the grace keepers i want to say it was like in 2015 2016 it was really interesting uh it was following like people who are kind of at sea and um, keeping these graces and anyway it's, it's, it's very folkloric and very it's so interesting and I just can't even describe it because it's you have to dive into it with like a very open um, feeling of a uh, of storytelling and of of universe because I think this is mostly based on Scottish folklore it doesn't really tell you where it's based um, I have another book by her, which is The Gloaming, which I can't wait to dive into as well, because her writing, yeah, like I said, is very lyrical, very, I almost like there's a longing in her writing that's really beautiful and also intriguing, because you kind of want to keep going to know where it's leading or where it, I know that the first one, it didn't feel like it led me anywhere, but also that's kind of the beauty of that book. Now let's get into the next category, which is historical fiction, which I think is another kind of genre that Scotland is really known for. And I guess it's like all the history of the country and, you know, the folklore and everything. I feel like there's so much to it. And um, like you can think of like Outlander. The first one that I want to recommend is, well, it's an author, it's Sarah Main. She does very, really good historical fiction, actually. So I read her first one, which was the, wasn't her first book, I think. Anyway. It was The House Between Tides and it kind of is a woman who heads up into the highlands and to find out I guess the secret about this house and you get to two different timelines and it's, I, I love the way that it's kind of blended in together and weaves. It's really interesting. It reminded me a little bit of The Lost Lights of St. Kilda by Elizabeth Gifford which I totally forgot to add to this list but here it is. I'll put it <laughs> because it's also obviously based in St. Kilda. It is historical fiction as well. Um, and it has like a, this dual um, of narrative that has uh, like the memories of before before and the memories of in the present tense which is usually like post-war so yeah very good as well but coming back to Sarah Main I have her book Women of the Dunes uh, in my library which I have not read yet but I'm very excited because I really love The House Between Ties I think it had like the romance and the mystery and the kind of family secrets and intergenerational like mystery like it's just really good and i think this one is gonna be quite similar because it spends like oh yeah here like uh, the main character um obviously I kept hearing about stories and legends and now she becomes an archaeologist and she works on uh, scotland's west coast so very interesting. Another one which I have not read is actually Of Stone and Sky by Marin Glover, which is a historical fiction about, um, basically it's about the disappearance of a shepherd in the highlands. And I don't know that much more, but I think it's also potentially a dual narrative. I'm not sure, 
but it's basically um i think it's his sister that wants to find out how and why he disappeared because all his possessions are found but not him so yeah it's very mysterious as well my next recommendation is the fair botanist by sarah sheridan uh this is again again historical fiction this is set in edinburgh and it is based especially around the botanic garden so if you're wanting to visit edinburgh if you're interested in kind of this botany i think they're kind of awaiting uh, the flowering of like a very rare flower so yeah it, it just sounded really intriguing and it's a woman who I think comes up from London to kind of escape that um, big city life I guess and what's happened to her over there. Next I wanted to recommend The Ninth Child by Sally Magnuson who is a great author. Um, I also have The Seal Woman's Gift which I have it in my library but this is kind of based more on Icelandic folklore I think and like pirates and stuff like that so not quite scottish but still wanted to mention it there is also the bass rock by evie wild which i've mentioned in my video about the edinburgh book festival because i heard her talk about it and i found it so interesting and i added it to my tbr because of that and it's still on my tbr um this is following three different women in three different timelines and how they're like connected through um the bass rock which is kind of off the east coast near edinburgh and I think that's why it kind of caught my attention because I was like, Ooh, <laughs> I know that place. Uh, and I think it talks a lot about like male violence against women. So again, like another subject that um, interests me as well uh, to hear about and read. Finally, my last historical fiction I wanted to recommend is Luck and Booth by Jenny Fagan. Um, I read that one last year as well. And it was so, oh, it was so creepy and so well done. And it felt like, so many genres mix in one like literary fiction a bit like fantasy horror mystery like it's just yeah it was really well crafted as a book so it's we kind of start with the arrival of the devil's daughter in edinburgh and she arrives at this tenement which is kind of like an apartment building in Scotland. and we then follow through the ages that tenement building the people who live in it and i guess like the repercussions of Kind of the curse of her having uh, arrived there and lived there and it's a really brilliant book and it really is weird <laughs> to say the least but yeah big big recommend if you enjoy um those genres like i've just discussed yeah and there's another one by her that i really want to read which is the sun pilgrims uh i think it's a bit like of a coming of age um story at the end of the apocalypse i think it's based like as the world is um freezing over basically uh and it's based i think part of it is based in scotland anyway i really really want to read that one as well but mention it all right the next category genre is contemporary the first one to recommend obviously is ali smith i think she is a top author to discover and to read um and to like kind of explore because some of her writing can feel a bit intimidating i think i have her book how to be both which I've not read yet, but I heard it's a really great way to start. I started her writing with uh, the seasonal quartet. So I started with autumn. I think that's where it starts. Um, and I want to read winter, I think probably next month in February because it's winter. So why not? Uh, but this is kind of a bit of like the political topical uh, series to dive into. I think it's a bit intimidating for that reason, but I really really enjoyed the first one actually. Once you get your mind into what it is, it's really good. Next, I really wanted to recommend Jackie Kay. She used to be the Macar for Scotland. She's an excellent uh, writer. She has written novels, uh, non-fiction like uh, sort of autobiographies, poetry actually. We had one of her poems at our wedding um, at the reading because it was just so beautiful. Um, so yes, she's an amazing, so I have her reality reality, but I think the one to recommend is Trumpet. I think it's one of her top books and it's kind of about the death of a legendary jazz player. And I guess like the grief and the love and the secrets that come after his death. I did want to briefly mention The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. It is based in the Highlands of Scotland. I listened to the audiobook in I think one of 2020 and uh, I love like two of the main characters are I guess the caretakers of the castle where this is based and they're Scottish and I just loved 
Scottish accents and it was just really beautiful like the voice actors were so good you have two storylines left so one of them is after they found the body and trying to find out what happened and then the few days and hours before uh, so it's kind of leading up so you're kind of building so it's really well done I wanted to mention it another one I've heard amazing things about and I want to read is Scabby Queens by Kristen Innes um, this one is I think difficult to summarize so I will do my best is following a woman's kind of life through various decades and kind of British politics, history. Um, she was famous and then she became kind of older and obviously like um, started being treated differently. And she, I believe she kills herself. And then you get everyone else's, not opinions, but like views about her and what happened. And it kills her enemies, her friends, her family. Like it's such an interesting book. So big recommend if you're into like more like experimental, like different kind of fiction. Next is a book that is kind of top of my Scottish TBR. Is Duffit by Ellie Percy. This is a kind of coming of age story based in the noughties, and it's based very much like um, around working class life and growing up in that kind of environment. Um, it won the Scottish novel of the year in 2021 so uh, that's why it became to my attention and it sounds really good and obviously I've moved here as an adult so I find it very interesting to learn about kind of growing up around here obviously and I guess this uh, leads me to Mayflies by Andrew O'Hagan this is another coming of age story based this time in the 80s and it's based on like I guess like a euphoria of youth and um, I think it's some best friends who head down for like this big concert and like it's based in that kind of um, not aesthetic but environment of like arts and like all of that and then it spans like their lifetime and then 30 years later something happens and yeah so a very interesting book. I've heard great things about it, I've not read it yet but I heard only great things and then yet again that leads me to Douglas Stewart, the one I cannot leave off this list. You may have heard of his book Shuggy Bane, it won the Booker Prize in 2020 and it is as well like it's about a boy growing up working class and with his mother. I think there's, I think it's really really tough like I've heard it's a tough read um, so I've not been wanting to get into it but his new book Young Mungo which I think is coming out this year if it hasn't come out yet. I, I really actually really want to read that. This is about queer love and a story again set in the backdrop of like a working class lifestyle and reality and I think like a lot of Scottish contemporary books have that because I guess like a majority of people will have grown up very much with this working class background and it's, it's just great to be able to read that reality in fiction as well. The final fiction category I wanted to get was classics. Just because I wanted to mention a few classic that if you're looking for some stuff written a bit longer ago. Um, so here they are. The first one I want to mention was The Prime of Miss Jean Brody. I thought I had a copy but I can't find it. Don't know. Um, so this is based in a girls school in Edinburgh and it's kind of centered around this teacher, Miss Jean Brody, and kind of the lifestyle that she's trying to impress onto her students and she gathers like this small group of like impressionable students who like kind of follow her to the letter um but like one of them ends up betraying her and it's the whole it's really short and it's kind of this classic of scottish literature uh there was a movie with maggie smith who plays miss jean brody if you've not seen it um there's also yeah that's the one i have on my list that i have not read yet it's whiskey galore by compton mckenzie this, uh, I've also, I've seen the movie of this one. This is based during wartime, just after the war. And it's basically this, um, I guess, boat carrying whiskey that shipwrecks next to this island. And the whiskey disappears and everyone's just like, what happened to this whiskey? And you get the story of all of the inhabitants who stole the whiskey. And yeah, so this is um, a funny, yeah, it says, the hilarious story of wartime bootlegging in the Scottish islands. This is a kind of classic of Scottish kind of um, narratives and stories. And I think this is based on a real life story. Anyway, <laughs> I, I, I really love 
the movie and I can't wait to read the book. Other kind of classics that I wanted to mention was obviously there's Walter Scott um, who is like a major writer in Scotland, Sir Walter Scott. There's the Scott Monument in Edinburgh that you can go up like to the top and it's like this little tiny staircase. Uh, I think I went to the top, I don't know if I actually went to the top top but almost at the top because it was actually got so high and so small the staircase but it's really fun attraction to do in Edinburgh. Uh, he wrote Rob Roy and Waverley. Waverley is also the station in Edinburgh, the train station. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of these kind of um, traditional names and works that have been kind of become permeated in our culture. Um, and obviously cannot not mention Robert Louis Stevenson who wrote Kidnap, Treasure Island, The Strange Case of a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You know, there's, these are like classics, uh, not very much based in Scotland, but very much like by Scottish authors and you get a, bit, a little bit of the vibe uh, of Scotland with these classics. And finally, I wanted to give you some recommendation of nonfiction. And because I was thinking of like which ones represent Scotland the most, I've fallen very much in the nature writing category. But I think, you know, if you want to, you're interested in Scotland and you want to learn more about it, I think this is a really great one to start with. Include some memoirs as well and stuff like that. Um, the first one is Sea Room, the story of one man, three islands and half a million puffins. So this is a story of Adam Nicholson who inherited, so basically his dad had bought the Shans Islands which are off of the Outer Hebrides, uh, so very remote and they've always been this kind of haven and escape for people trying to get away from like the bustling life and stuff like that and to be able to reflect. So he inherits them and kind of goes back and it's very much like a celebration of the islands and of island life. Another one that I really love was Findings by Kathleen Jamie. And it's not just based in Scotland, but a lot of it is. And she is an amazing writer of nature writing. Uh, I also read Sightlines and she also has Surfacing that has just come out that I really want to get to at some point. But my favorite up to now is Findings and is is in, in the details of nature and his observations and it's just brilliantly read and you kind of want to start paying more attention after reading this book. My next suggestion is Love of Country, A Hebridean Journey by Madeline Bunting. Uh, it's another one about um, a woman who kind of goes through the, the Outer Hebrides or islands off the kind of west, northwest coast of Scotland and yeah, it's just kind of their influence, like their inspiration. And she goes through over there and talks about that kind of landscape and way of life. And it's really beautiful. And similarly, there is um, The Outrun by Amy Leptrop. This is a memoir about a woman who moves back to Orkney, which is an island uh, in the north of Scotland, by Bill of Shetland. And uh, after like she's had some problems and she moves back and because uh, she returns more than a decade after leaving, which she always wanted to escape. So it's this kind of, um, you get like both perspective when she returns. And yeah, it's really, um, it's one that I've started but not finished yet, but I definitely want to get to it at some point. <laughs> the next one is The Hidden Ways, Scotland's Forgotten Road by Alastair Moffat. And this is a really interesting kind of delve and I guess he retraces and talks to us about like the different roads in Scotland and there's like so much history here so you get like Roman roads and pilgrimage routes and it's just so fascinating look into I guess almost like the development of Scotland as it is today and as it was yeah and I couldn't do this list without mentioning Nan Shepherd um I have her book The Weather House but the book to mention is The Living Mountain this is really like the book in nature writing that you want to read about Scotland. It's really short, it's very lyrical, and it's really well written, and it's very much an ode to the Cairngorms, which are mountains and it also become a park um, in the centre of Scotland. And it is, yeah, it is absolutely beautiful. Another one that I've started and not finished. But yeah, it's um, a really enchanting look and an homage to Scotland's natural world. So yeah, all of these are must read, especially, I think I didn't really think of nature writing before kind of delving into all these Scottish books. And it helps obviously, if you're from a country like, cause you'll be able to like notice certain things and you'll be like, oh, when we go visit that place, 
Um, so obviously I recommend that you read potentially nature writing from where you are, where you're from, where you're living. But if you're interested in Scotland, like these are so good to give you an idea and also like a window into these different like uh, islands, especially I think they have such a magical um, pull. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's really a really good way to kind of learn more about Scotland. All right, I think that was it. Yeah, so the, about, about 30 recommendations in terms of um, authors mostly, because I think I recommend multiple ones per author. I'll put the list uh, in the description down below. So sometimes I think I've spoken a bit, bit quickly because I was trying to get through so much, but you'll have a description below. You can look it up. You can always ask me if you want any recommendations of books um, based uh, in Scotland. I focus mostly on books by Scottish authors or authors based in Scotland you know Scottish by choice and stuff like that like me <laughs> but um there's obviously loads out there including like Outlander like if you that's the kind of literature you like go for it uh, I love the tv show I have actually a friend who writes on a tv show and I'm so proud of her and that's my claim to fame you know <laughs> um but yeah it's a great tv show and especially the bits in Scotland that talks to you about the Scottish history um and obviously like the main characters have so much chemistry anyway uh and obviously my list didn't include like other huge top authors including like Irvin Welsh um there's also Louise Welsh not technically related I think uh Alexander McCall Smith I'm not really in included any poetry poets so this list is in no way exhaustive and complete um this was very much a what I read that I really recommend and also what I have on my TBR list because I wanted to talk about all these books and actually making this list and talking about them has made me want to pick all of them up because I cannot wait and I just love to read about the country where I live. Yes, so happy Burns night. Um, I hope you enjoyed my suggestions. Let me know if you've read any of them, if any of them kind of appeal to you. What book in Scotland have you read that you kind of want to recommend to me? Maybe I've not mentioned one. Thanks so much for watching and hey, see you back. Bye!